Either someone who's been maining him since Smash on the 64, or someone who just wanted a character who was easy to pick up and learn combos with. Probably not the sweatiest guy in the room, but not far from it either. Donkey Kong. These people just wanted to pick up the big, funny monkey, but once they learned about DK's four different aerial spikes, they immediately became insufferable. We'll most likely sing the monkey rep whenever they're in the lead. Not gonna lie, they probably just play Smash because their friends made them. They'd much rather be playing Breath of the Wild or explaining to kids online that his name isn't actually Zelda. Thomas. Someone who knows that they're gonna get wrecked if they come within 10 feet of their opponent, so they pick the character that can just spam Char Shot from across the stage. If you spot one of these at a tournament, you might want to stay 10 feet away from them too. Either someone who legitimately knows the lore of Metroid Prime, or just someone who wanted to use the edgy version of Samus. The 10-foot rule still applies. Yoshi. Wait, what? How long has this character been on the roster? Since the N64? So you're saying that this character has been a playable option for years? Well, excuse me for not seeing anyone that wants to main Barney the freaking dinosaur in Smash. Kirby. For some reason, nobody who mains this character actually uses Kirby for his intended purpose, actually sucking in the opponents and taking their powers. They'd much rather stick to his combo potential, decent punishing options, or just spamming up B. Fox. One of the original Smash fans. They'll spend all day telling you why Melee is the best Smash game and why no other game will ever do it justice. Either that, or they're just a furry. Either one is equally as likely. Pikachu. Either a girl picking up Smash for the first time and playing the only character she recognizes, or a tryhard who hopes that maining Pikachu will just automatically make them good. Only one of those types is any fun at a party. Luigi. Ahoy, Sponge Boy, me Bob! I've been grabbed by Luigi at 6% because I got greedy and whipped in air. I am now going to take 93.5% for making a single mistake at the beginning of the game and will soon need life support. Arg, 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 arg. Yes. Captain Falcon. Most likely someone who picked up the character just to hear the Falcon Punch quote. But once they realized they couldn't actually land any, they just kept using him to make it seem like they weren't just in it for the memes. We're on to you though. You can't hide the truth forever. Probably some 30-year-old dude with a neckbeard who still lives with his mom. He's trying to make a living off of streaming because he knows that the outside world is too scary for him. Either that or a troll who plays FD with Final Smashes on. One of the more gutsy players in the Smash community. They know they'll never be able to land those turnip combos, but gosh darn it, they're gonna try! Their hobbies include cooking, sports, and actually communicating with people in real life. Jigglypuff mains, take note. Easy. Like Peach mains, but with better tastes. Bowser. Unlikely to be more than 11 years old. If you ever accidentally SD, they'll start teabagging before pulling you into a side B kamikaze offstage. I'd rather just take the 30 minute ban for disconnecting in the middle of a match. Ice Climbers! Ice Climbers is their favorite game of all time. You try to introduce them to new games, but they never listen. They're too busy climbing. You try to talk them down, telling them that this is real life and not a game, but they never listen. They just keep climbing. They need to reach the top, even if there is no top. Probably pissed that they can't wobble in this game. More than likely made Sheik in a previous Smash game and still hasn't realized how much worse she is now. I mean, th that's it. That's all of them. There are no Sheik mains who don't fit this criteria. Elba. The anime freak who picked the cute girl from the intro who uses neutral B to get out of every situation possible. If they get some space between you, expect them to spam Phantom and Side B. They have no problem grabbing the last lights of pizza. Dr. Mario. Someone who secretly wants to main Mario, but doesn't want to come off as boring or a tryhard. They'll talk about how they just enjoy the differences between the two, but then complain about how they'd win if they were playing a high tier. More than likely a med student. Pichu. Someone who never quite learned how to evolve Pichu in Gold and Silver version, so they cling to Pichu in hopes that someday it will be viable. Just like in the Pokemon games though, it'll never be better than Pikachu. Uh, they like Star Fox, I guess? I, uh... 
I don't know. I have no idea why someone would main Falco over Fox. Either an old school Fire Emblem fan or someone who just transitioned from Melee. They used the excuse that they like to get tippers to justify using Marth over Lucina, despite getting maybe one per match. They more than likely have an IRL katana in their bedroom somewhere. Lucina. Nothing to see here, folks. Just your average sortie user. They saw that Lucina was pretty high on most tier lists and decided to try her out for themselves. They'll walk into the party with a smile, but that doesn't actually mean that they feel joy. They don't feel anything. Not anymore. To be fair, you have to have a very high IQ to understand Young Link. The spacing is extremely subtle, and without a solid grasp of projectile physics, most of the arrows will go over a typical opponent's head. As a consequence, people who dislike Young Link truly are idiots. Of course they wouldn't appreciate- This guy is too busy to play the game. He needs the match to be over now, and whether he wins or you win, he will make sure that it ends quickly. After all, he's got a girl back home waiting for him. She was kidnapped. It's Zelda. You too. Someone who knows how much that tail hurtbox messes up their game plan, but this is supposed to be the strongest Pokemon in the world, and they're going to make him work. Not necessarily a Gen 1-er, but will still hide in the bathroom playing Pokemon Red between sets. Boy. Wanted to play as Lucina, but didn't want to play as a gross girl. Then they discovered the side B option and... well... we all know what happened after that. Someone who discovered they could kill people off stage with their Uppy, and... Well... We all know what happened after that. Mr. Game and Watch. These mains originally picked up Game & Watch because of how different he was from the rest of the roster. At first, they just wanted to see how many 9s they could get with their hammer, but now they just spam Up B out of shield. Every. Single. Time. Meta Knight. The typical masher has so many B moves that they don't really have any need to press the A button. They're probably not old enough to have used him back in the Brawl days, but if he was broken back then, surely that means he's at least somewhat viable. <laughs> probably that guy who everyone knows exists, but never actually talks to. Not a bad person by any means, but more than likely the guy who takes the photo of everyone else in the group. Their favorite anime is Yuru Yuri. literally just wanted to pick the most naked female character on the roster and got spoiled to find out that they ended up with one of the best characters in the game. If they start talking about Metroid Zero Mission, leave. This is not a person you want to interact with. Mario! Someone who connects with their character on a level that's more spiritual than healthy. If they lose, they'll blame it on the nerfs. If they win, they'll start reenacting all of Wario's best moves. Wario has one best move. The most likely candidate in the group to own an Xbox. They picked him up thinking it would be like one of their first-person shooters, but once they realized how much precision and high IQ they needed for every single move, they just said, meh, better than the Sword Fighters. Probably doesn't even realize that Ike is a Fire Emblem character. They just picked up the guy with the biggest sword in the base game and learned what happens when they get a single Nair. We'll likely get a job as either an accountant or an HVAC technician. Pokemon Trainer! Not only does this person love the Pokemon franchise, but once they learned they could play three characters in one, they jumped on it the first chance they got. Their favorite of the three is Charizard. Guess what their favorite move is? Kong. This person doesn't care what you think. This person just cares about the result. Oh, they won? It isn't because they jumped around waiting for you to slip on a banana peel the entire time. It's because they're better than you, and they want you to know that. Lucas. Oh, jeez. Uh, uh, we're just... No, we're not gonna do this one. Sonic. One of the true Sonic the Hedgehog fans. More than likely has several OCs on DeviantArt as well as three to six body pillows, only two of which have a human on them. They're the kind of people who will try to style on you and then rage once they get three stocked. Someone who literally just wanted to see a morbidly obese penguin do the French girl pose. Go ahead. Find me someone that does not fit that description. You can't. Someone who gets A's in school and majors in some form of engineering, but has never spoken to a girl besides their mom. 
When you ask this person what they're listening to, they'll most likely try to hide their Serbian polka music on their phone. Always good to have at least one of these in your friend group. Lucario. This person got so fed up with being 3 stuck they had no other choice but to pick up Lucario. Without his aura gimmick, they would most likely lose in their first 30 seconds. These are the type of people- Actually, you know what, let's talk about it. Spams PK Freeze in Free For All or Team Battle, runs away and throws out PK Fire in 1v1s, teabags any time you're in disadvantage state, even when taunts are turned on, and disconnects any time you're even up one stock. They're the type of people who unironically wear a propeller cap and sip on chocolate milk in the middle of class. And you know what else? They probably enjoy the second Space Jam movie more than the first one. Do you really think someone like that deserves my respect? Probably the guy who brought all the snacks to the party. He had to pick up a top tier because he's too busy contributing to society to practice as hard as the Ganondorf mains. If he can tell you what NES games are compatible with the Rob toy though, destroy his Switch. He's never allowed to play video games ever again. Thinks the regular Link is too boring, but Young Link is too spammy. This person would much rather play Toon Link and talk about how much more skill it takes to actually be good with this character. Probably still sucks against any character with a reflector. Speaking of which, I made jokes about Fox and Sonic mains being furries, but they are nothing compared to Wolf mains. This person just wanted to pick up one of the easiest characters in the game so that they could spend the rest of the day fantasizing about Beastars. No, I don't care how good the plot of the show is, I'm not gonna watch it! Not an Animal Crossing fan. Not even a Smash fan. Just someone who found moderate success with the Lloyd Rocket and Forward Air gimmick that they will never approach unless they have to. Will more than likely complain to the TO about their opponent stalling the whole match. Mega Man! I can't find a single reason why someone would play this character unless they're a diehard fan of the Mega Man franchise and are trying desperately to make him work. If you find someone who actually mains this character, give them a hug. They probably need one right about now. Someone who enjoys the idea of fitness more so than the actual practice itself. Likes the idea of being able to heal mid-battle and use projectiles, but not spammy like Samus mains. Has at least one friend and can name at least one NBA team that isn't the Lakers. And Luma. The person who has no problem being that guy will most likely disagree with the rest of the group just to have a fair balance of opinions. When this person jokes about how you don't want to see their internet search history, they're the only one laughing. I chose this character because I wanted a challenge. It would be too easy if I used- ARE YOU FREAKING KIDDING ME THIS CHARACTER SUCKS! Hang on, you're going down. Let me just use one of my other mains. Greninja. A Pokemon fan who thought that Pikachu was too boring and Pokemon Trainer was too hard. Not one of the people you would think of when you think of the worst players in the community, but then again, they're not people you would normally think of in the first place. Did you end up going to that one guy's birthday party? Oh, d don't worry, I didn't either. Someone who wanted to use a joke character like the pig from Minecraft, but otherwise doesn't actually care about the game. They're just trying to get a few punches in before GG's and popping open a cold one with the boys. Yep. Someone who wanted to use a sword character but got made fun of whenever they tried to use one of the anime sword characters. Now they're stuck in mediocrity, trying to fight off both their opponent as well as their low self-esteem. Hey baby, I like that Saitan of yours. Why don't we do a couple of nares and head back to my place? I can give you an explosive flame if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Mom! Get out of my room! We're in love! You wouldn't understand! <laughs> One of two people. Either someone who legitimately wants to compete at a high level, or someone who watched the Scott Pilgrim movie and picked him up to pay homage to their favorite movie. Either way, not usually tryhards and can typically hold a conversation outside of anime. Robin. One of the highest IQ players in the game. They know that their resources are limited, so they're constantly playing 5D chess in order to plan out their next six moves in advance. Either that, or a fan of one of the better Fire Emblem games. Usually the cool one in the friend group. Just wanna know what your favorite part of Xenoblade is. Um... Get the f*** out of my office right now! Bowser Jr. More than likely has an older brother who mains Bowser and wanted to pick up the baby character to be similar but not a straight up copycat. 
Unfortunately, they also usually play like a baby character, so you don't need to feel bad about keeping them off stage. There's a reason the announcer puts a long space in the middle of their name. Because if he didn't, these mains would actually exist. Someone who's more of a fan of traditional fighting games but couldn't convince their friends to play Street Fighter with them. They'll play along like they're having a good time, but they're secretly miffed that they can get killed at zero with no health bar to save them. Someone who WANTS to be a fan of traditional fighting games, but couldn't convince their friends to play with them. They take the time to learn the game while simultaneously trying to make it sound like they actually know the lore of Street Fighter. Someone who believes that Final Fantasy VII is the best game in the franchise, and who switched over to Nintendo consoles at the same time as all the other JRPGs. More than likely that their game plan revolves around Blade Beam and Uppy, with the occasional up air when you're in disadvantage. Corrin. Two possibilities. Either they play the girl Corrin and wanted to try out a sword character who can play at a distance, or they play male Corrin and make everyone around them uncomfortable. Probably doesn't like feet as much as everyone says, but it's hard to know for sure with them. Bayonetta. The only people who main her in Ultimate are the ones who just wanted to have fun with her back in Smash 4, but couldn't because of how much people hated her. Now they can't have fun because of the massive nerfs she got, but still cling to their character as if their hope alone can make her viable again. A fan of the core series games more so than Smash itself. If there are any Inkling mains left after everyone dropped them in 2019, they're mainly just trying to get out a couple booyahs while having a good time with the gang. We'll drop Smash immediately once Splatoon 3 comes out though. At this point, it's less likely that this person actually likes Metroid, and more likely that they just wanted to play the cool dragon character. Tried hitting Skewer once and then just said, screw it, I'll just use Space Pirate Rush from now on. Simon. You play online doubles. Richter. You play online doubles and lose. King K. Rool. Someone who missed out on the early days of Smash when this character was borderline broken, and now relies on his crown cannon combo in most situations. Not as bad as Bowser mains, but still not high on the social ladder. Isabel. Please don't shield, please don't shield, please don't- ARE YOU FREAKING KIDDING ME?! Incineroar. Probably doesn't even remember that Incineroar is a Pokemon, and for good reason. If these guys spammed taunts the whole game, they'd actually be more tolerable. But instead, they wait for you to attack, spam revenge, and fish out any side beasts they can possibly get. Not fun at parties or any social event ever. This person is an enigma. Just because they use Piranha Plant doesn't mean they're actually real. They just want you to think they're really there. That's their trick. Right when you think you've figured out what's going on in their minds, you realize they had no minds to begin with. You've been playing against your own consciousness this whole time. Joker. Someone who wants to main the best character in the game while trying not to look like they're carried as hard as Pikachu mains. Make no mistakes. They paid for their talent, and once Arsene comes out, you'd better hope you paid for some talent of your own. Hero. Has no qualms with the anime sword fighter trope, and legitimately just wants to have a good time with a fun character. They know they're not carried like some of the other sorties in the game, but they have a gambling addiction that just can't be fixed with anyone else. Banjo and Let's face it, they've been waiting for this character to come out for years because they played the original game for three hours growing up but now they're just trying to force a smile knowing that the character's moveset didn't live up to their expectations. Now they just play the funny bear because... <laughs> Unlikely to be a fan of mainstream fighting games, but the idea of a hip 90s character yelling out catchy quotes in a Japanese accent was way too alluring to pass up. You can never tell if they're teabagging or just trying to input one of their go moves, but honestly, they probably don't know either. Violet easily one of the coolest players in the fanbase. While most of the community was having an absolute meltdown of yet ANOTHER deserving Fire Emblem character being added to the roster, these guys were busy trying out the new tech and overall having fun with the new character. If they use the 7th costume though, they're just a fanboy. Hehe, <laughs> Dragon Go <laughs> The epitome of Gamer. They spent 10 years learning the best mining techniques, and once their long sought after pipe dream came true, they put those skills to the test and created one of the most combo heavy characters in the game. Yet they still choose to camp with the minecart half the match and put up walls so that you physically can't approach them. Zephyrol. 
The definition of edge. These mains originally picked up Sephiroth for the angsty teen vibe, but then stayed after finding out how broken his giant sword is. We'll most likely complain about people who wanted the swimsuit versions of Pyra and Mithra, while simultaneously using Sephiroth's shirtless skin. Pyra, Mithra. While it may be insinuated that these people only chose the Aegis for their OP moveset or jiggle physics, these means are usually pretty decent people who donate to charity, help those in need, and are genuinely nice and polite people to everyone around them. They're not going to argue that Xenoblade 1 was better than 2, they're just going to have fun with their character. Even if you don't. Kazuya. Mom, look, I'm doing combos with one hand, are you proud of me? Sora. When these people saw Sora announced as the final fighter, they straight up lost their minds. Finally, after waiting for nearly 20 years and going through Nomura's wild ride of retcons and Xehanorts, the most requested Smash character of all time has finally arrived. Even if they get 3 stocked, they'll do it with a smile on their face, because win or lose, their dreams came true. Unless they use the Timeless River skin, in which case f And that's gonna be it! Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and uh... You know what, even if you hated it, leave a like anyway. Just don't show the Lucas mains, it's probably past their bedtime. Uh, uh, okay. I'm really gonna go now. Leave a like, bye!